Welcome back to the Floating Island. I'm Charles and this is part 2 of our Wellington mission. But first, here's a short recap of part 1 where we gathered some power for an epic feast on top of Wellington. If you haven't seen it, here's the link and here's a short clip about part 1. Alrighty, let's start our second part. We have the same crew with mighty Brett Gibbs. And Mr. Peter Windham. We are spearfishing along the same coast of Makara in the windy Wellington region. So let's get going. Today's main target is the butterfish. Actually, a pretty cool name. Butterfish. Probably most common fish to be speared in New Zealand and has an exceptional texture. In my opinion, the easiest fish to cook, probably also to shoot. But make sure to leave it in the fridge for at least one day prior to cooking. This will definitely ferment the meat and you have a way better result. And there are as well other species that roam these waters, which we might come across. So let's get this started. When I hunt for butterfish, I try to take those that are less spooked, like this one. This is a good example that it's sometimes a waiting game when they hide in the wheat. Just be patient and eventually they come out again. Here's a pretty cool sight, what appears to be yellow-eyed mullets eating jellyfish. And at the end of the day we tried to dive for some tarakihi but ended up getting a blue cot for the table and as you can see they are not really hard to shoot. Pretty uh, nice out here in Macro, eh? It actually is a bit though. It's like that sun come out from a little bit of water. So yeah, 10 metres plus down yeah, there. That real cool, like the bay. Yeah. Better than when it's got all through here, it must have picked up. You want to open your catch pack? Alright, but I got my eyes on you. Alrighty, we're back in Toranga and we have our friend Roman. He's yeah. finally back and we're giving him a treat. We brought all the fish and the power and the crayfish back from Wellington. And yeah, we think he has to do a taste test. Yeah. Because he okay. eat, hasn't eaten for a while. And uh, yeah, we get back, back straight into it and start filleting. 
Alrighty, here we got our butterfish. Gonna quickly fill it this guy. So we left the butterfish one day in the fridge, that way the flesh becomes just firmer. Like usually if you eat the butterfish the same day, they're too soft and this definitely helps to get the fish a bit more, let's say more tight when it comes to flesh and it's just better to cook them up. And as you can see here, the bones are blue, which is always pretty impressive. I think it's a, it's a um, Californian cabazon. Mm -hmm. They actually also have blue flesh. They are basically the same. They have blue bones and blue flesh. But yeah, that's basically it. Easy eggs. So here you got the V bones, or just pin bones. I call them V bones. It's basically like a V you cut out, so it's easier to remember. A bit in here. Grab the skin and then just keep holding it, just wiggle it all the way through and then just peel this off where the bone, bones are in and that's basically it. So you get the scales off and we're ready to cook. Regarding today's beer, we are having a Spades Summit Ultra Low Carb Lager and a Max Ultra Violet Low Carb Pale Ale. Mmm. It's just something. We ended up having quite a mixture of seafood with that butterfish, a bit of kahawai sashimi, a simple butter garlic fried power, and to finish off we had a butter garlic fried crayfish. Since Roman was gone so long, I think this should get his taste buds going crazy again on what New Zealand has to offer. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode and if you haven't hit that subscribe button and we see you on the next one.